bird watching comes easily to those who wait, or does it? We've seen pretty monumental declines, particularly in migrant birds, birds that go down to the neotropics uh, that uh, nest in the boreal forests of Canada. Among the experts keeping track, Evan Dalton and his team at Manomet, a nonprofit conservation organization in Plymouth. We're certainly along the coast, and in the fall, that means that we catch a lot of young birds going down the coast. We've got a lovely bird. This is a gray catbird. Since the mid 1960s, Manomet has banded a quarter of a million songbirds. They use mist nets to safely catch the birds before bringing them to a banding lab. So as the bird flies, along through the forest it can't really see these fibers very well and it hits the net falls right in male black-throated blue warbler we're just getting a small snapshot of their life cycle but through the knowledge that we've acquired as well as other banding stations breeding bird surveys and then studies also of their survivorship these are all things that are helping us piece together the puzzle of how climate change might be impacting these birds Included in that puzzle, habitat loss and changes in the food web. For us, the biggest change we've seen is, is in migration arrival timing. So warmer temperatures, particularly in the spring. That means bugs and berries can emerge before birds arrive, worsening an already alarming trend. In 2019, the journal Science reported that North America is seeing 3 billion fewer birds compared to 50 years ago. So this is a magnolia warbler. Uh, it is a bird that breeds in spruce trees in dense forests. This little one doesn't seem to mind being measured and weighed. This is a young bird that is headed south for the first time. Dalton releases the birds quickly so they can resume migration with minimal disruption. Humans can help make their journey easier, even in a changing climate, says Dalton. My biggest recommendation is planting native plants. Birds that have moved through have evolved to depend on native plants. What we do to impact birds here impacts those same birds wherever they go. Manomet is also monitoring local coastal health. Mike Molnar is director of the Coastal Zone Initiative. Warmer, saltier waters are having an impact on the plankton species out there, which are the base of the food web. There was some research that found that since the 90s, the productivity level of plankton in the Gulf is one third of what it used to be. Also in trouble, salt marshes, which deliver nutrients to birds and fish, filter pollution and protect against erosion. We've had 11 inches of sea level rise here off the Cape since 1928. It's forecast to be a foot and a half sea level rise by 2050 and up to six feet of sea level rise by 2100. So salt marshes are getting pinched from the wet side. So they're getting pushed inland, they're getting drowned and it's causing a lot of different issues. Including critically impacting shorebirds, among them least terns, roseate terns, and wimbrels. Eastern Massachusetts is a great example of that, particularly Cape Cod and the Outer Cape, where up to maybe 100,000 shorebirds all the way from July through November pass through. Manomet conservation biologist Alan Nidal studies wimbrels. He says their favorite food is the fiddler crab found in abundance on the Cape. As we see marshes degrade on the Cape, there might not be the appropriate sort of habitat to support wimbrel populations as well as all the other wildlife. Wimbrels need to eat a lot. They migrate from Massachusetts to the coast of South America. That flight could take four days nonstop. That means no resting, eating, or drinking. Wimbrels can shrink some of their internal organs to create room for fat and the expansion of other organs, including chest muscles and the heart. They're basically carrying everything that they can with them and basically burning fat reserves. To collect data, Nidal and his colleagues equip some Wimbrels with lightweight satellite transmitters. Between the last 20 years or so, we've had maybe a 50% decline. There are accounts of upwards of 700 birds during peak migration around the turn of the century, but now we're only getting two or three hundred birds. They're relying on coastal water-based habitats that are also very prized resource for people. So someone might not realize when they're out on a beach 
next to a flock of staging shorebirds roosting at high tide, that that's the only place those birds can be, that there's a sense of obligation to share that resource. Wow, and Evan Dalton of the Banding Lab says climate change can actually help some birds thrive. Well, right. right. Think about the Carolina wren, which was a bird that was never in our area back in the 1960s, say. Now the Carolina wrens are here commonly, um, and they're here to stay, and that's largely because of warmer weather. So there are other impacts that come from that kind of migration and movement of species, but uh, not all suffer under climate change. All right.